Now, did you know 80% of teenagers get spots to some degree? And boys are more likely to get them than girls. But remember, don't squeeze them. Ouch. Spots. I used to get them. I still do get them. You're probably going to get them, and nobody likes them. But for some teenagers, puberty can make spots a lot worse. Clear. <laughs> so, why does puberty make spots worse? Well, imagine this is your skin, and there is a hair follicle with a hair growing out of it. Now, every hair follicle has a sebaceous gland, which makes a special kind of oil called sebum. And sebum's good normally, keeps your skin moist. But during puberty, sebum levels can skyrocket, can block up the hair follicle and cause a spot. Everyone has to put up with the old spot now and then. But if it gets really bad, it's called acne. And if you have acne, there are special clinics on standby to help. I'm visiting a special acne clinic at Oxford University Hospital's NHS Trust. In charge today, consultant dermatologist Tess McPherson. What kind of things cause acne? I think there's lots of myths associated with acne. It doesn't mean you've got dirty skin. Um, other things which people always ask me about is diet. Um, there's not much evidence that diet plays a clear role. And if you've had a bad acne in the family, you're more likely to get bad acne yourself. Yeah. So there's certainly a genetics play a role. But the main cause is hormones. This is 15-year-old Josh. Hard to believe he had bad acne for a couple of years. I had it all over the face, the back, the neck, the other back of the neck, a bit on the chest as well. It wasn't very nice. But after seven months of treatment at the clinic with a tablet that stops the production of sebum, Josh is doing much better. Although he does have some leftover scarring on his back. So was your back probably the most severely affected area? Uh, yeah, definitely. So although that scarring does look quite dramatic at the moment, over time that will fade and those will end up going... Some of these ones which are a little bit bumpy will certainly flatten out over time. And now I've had the treatment, I'm a lot happier. As long as it cleared up on my face, I was pretty much happy with that. So don't worry, scars can fade. But remember, don't pick. If you're worried about getting spots when you're a teenager, then don't panic. In severe cases like Josh, Doctors can prescribe creams and tablets to help, but everyone gets some spots, and here's some tips. Apart from creams and medicines, you can help yourself by shampooing your hair regularly and avoid letting it fall across your face. Don't wash affected areas of skin more than twice a day, and don't pick them. Remember Neve and her broken ankle? Let's hop over to the emergency department to see how she's getting on. We've never done that before. <laughs> We're back at Sheffield Hospital with 10-year-old Neve, who has a broken ankle. Neve had just been in her maths class at school and was heading for lunch when she fell down some stairs and hurt her ankle. She spent the last two days in hospital waiting for the swelling to go down. It was a bit better than I like. I can wiggle my toes. Oh, yeah, that's definite wiggling. <laughs> which is good news, as it means the swelling has gone down. But before Neve can go home, she has to be able to get about, and there's one thing she's hoping for. I'm looking forward to getting crutches. Why is that? Yeah, I can hit my brother with them. <laughs> um, I don't think that's what crutches are for, Neve. Time to bring in physios Louise and Helen. They're here to help Neve learn how to get around on one leg. Neve can't walk on her broken ankle for the next six weeks. That's because a fracture can be delicate whilst it's healing. If she puts weight on her ankle too soon, the broken bones could move and take even longer to mend, or worse, heal in the wrong position. So to make sure this doesn't happen, she needs support from crutches or a walking frame until she regains full movement and strength. Let's do hopping. Are you good at hopping? OK, so keep that leg off the floor okay. all the time. First, the physios try Neve with a walking frame. Fantastic. And then it's on to the crutches. They're a little bit more harder to use, so we'll see how we get on. Neve wants crutches, but the physios have to be confident that she's safe on them. Nice and slowly. She's off. Crutches always look like fun, don't they, Zant? Yes, Chris, but actually they can be quite tricky to master. So, is it going to be a walking frame or crutches? We've decided that she's safer to go home with a walking frame at the moment, just because crutches are quite hard when you're not allowed to put your weight through your leg. No crutches, but Neve doesn't seem to mind. So what have you learned then, Neve? Not to run down any stairs. 
You're not kidding. Bye! <laughs> now we're going to mess with your mind... It's weird. ..scramble your senses... ..and baffle your brain... ..in, in Mindbenders. Mind can I have a sweet? Oh, no. You've got loads there. Surely you can spare me one? Ordinarily, Chris, I'd love to. But these have got to last me all the way to lunchtime. Till lunchtime? But you're never going to eat all those before lunchtime. Go on, give me one. All right, I tell you what, you can have one. Brilliant. Ah, da, 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 da. You can have one if you can grab it before me. Now, I'm going to give you a head start. Put your hand there. Your hand's closer than mine, and all you have to do is grab it when I say go. Looks like I'm going to get my sweet after all. Three, two, one, go. That is an amazing trick. Do you think I could do it? Oh, I think so. It is an amazing trick, isn't it? Great. I'm going to go and try it myself. All right, good luck. Wait a minute. He only needs one sweet to do the trick. What am I going to eat until lunch? I've headed to a town centre to see how many sweets I can win. Time to see if I'm as good at this as Dr Zand and Benson Mines. Now, do you reckon you can get the sweet before me if we both go on go? Definitely. Y you sure of that? Yeah. Three, two, one... Go. <laughs> go. How do you do yes. that? <laughs> go. Uh... What am I going to do with all my sweets? I keep winning every time. Go. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> miles away. How did you get that? Go. Oh, miles away. Go. Oh, oh there's no, miles no, away. No, no. Go. What are you doing? Are you feeling all right? Yeah. Now, although all these people had quick reaction times, they're not going to beat me. And that's because there is a slight delay in the word go, leaving my mouth, getting into their ears, being processed in their brain, and then their hand moving. Whereas in my brain, because I've said it, my hand starts to move immediately without any delay, no matter how small. Well, that's my mind bent. Is yours? <laughs> Now, did you know more than half of the bones in your body are found in your hands and feet? There are 27 in each hand and 26 in each foot. Wow! Sometimes things don't always heal exactly as planned, as our next patient found out. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ultramobile for his first patient. And I'll also be out in the park answering your burning questions. That's amazing! At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is ten-year-old Anna with a funny finger. That's amazing! Seems perfectly obvious why you've come to the Ultramobile. That's nothing. Look at my little finger. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Looks to me like a case of my little finger's even more amazing than the trick I can do with my other finger's itis. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about your little finger, Anna. It started when I was five years old. My mum told me to open the door and it, the door just, like, hit it and it cracked. Painful. Mm-hmm. So what happened then? The doctor put this um, straight thing on me to make it, like, stay straight, but it didn't work. So, Anna, I want to have a closer look at your finger. Can you open the eyelid on the ouch cam? Brilliant. Now, get it as straight as you can. <laughs> That's all you can do, is it? Yeah. <laughs> So the doctor used something called a splint, and the splint is meant to hold a broken bone straight until it mends. And in your case, the splint didn't work. It's nothing to worry about. Does the finger work well for you, or would you prefer to have it straightened out? It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I have to do an operation when I go old, older. In the future, if you started to get ache in the joints, or you did a job where you needed to do something very precise with your left hand, at that point, you might think about doing an operation. And it certainly is possible to straighten out that finger. Well, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile. You're welcome. Time to get out of the Ouchmobile and into the park. I want to see if anyone's got any questions for me. Let's go out and about. Why does uh, your belly rumble when you're hungry? In fact, it can rumble at any time. But when you're eating, you swallow bits of air. And when you're digesting food, it actually makes gas. And the rumbling is the bubbles bubbling up through the stuff you've eaten. And the name is Boroborygmi. So the next time you're getting rumbling, you can go, oh, I've just got a bit of Boroborygmi going on. <laughs> 
back at the Alchmobile, the next case is in the waiting room. Can I have the next patient, please? It's 12-year-old Carnell with an extraordinary eye. So, Carnell, what's brought you to the Alchmobile? Uh, when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off itis. I know what you mean. Now, tell me more about that. It's called Marcus-Gunn syndrome. Now, that is a very, very rare syndrome indeed. So, in all the things ever published about medicine, there are only 300 people reported to have had it. Can you open the eye on the ouch cam? Now, can you give us a demonstration of what happens? I can't see it. Now, can you try wiggling your jaw from side to side like that? It's not easy to see, but Carnell's eyelid is twitching from side to side. That's because the bit of his brain that's making his jaw move is also telling his eyelid to move. And does it affect your life at all? No, not really, because not much people notice it. As a doctor, it is very interesting to see someone with a syndrome this rare. Carnell, thank you very much for coming and showing us your amazing eye in the Ouchmobile. OK, thank you, Dr Zan. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs>